Welcome back. So we're going to look very briefly at some of the investment strategies of venture capital groups. So let's talk about the quantitative factors, right, the numbers. First of all, we've got to think about investment size. You need to make sure that the amount that you're asking for roughly matches what that venture capital group, you as the entrepreneur, I mean, roughly matches the, kinds of the, the size that that venture capital group invests in typically. So let me give an example. If you know your venture capital group has $10 million to invest and they're going to normally invest it in about 10 companies, you know that they're going to invest you know, a million dollars you know, in each company. Now, uh, they may do like staging, for example. That's true, you know, where they invest you know, not all the million dollars up front, but they, you know, 250 based on this performance target, you know, 500 based on this performance target, and then like the last 500 or 250,000. Yeah, they might do that. But still, you need, to fit, you need to know how much they're going to invest total, right? So if that venture capital group invests about a million dollars in each company and you ask for $2 million, that almost will disqualify you immediately, okay? By the same token, you may invest for, ask for just $200,000 and that might also disqualify you because your business is not big enough. And I know what you all as entrepreneurs are thinking, right? I got it. You're thinking, well... You know, if I ask for as much as I think I'll need, that's a good thing because I can get all that money and therefore I don't have to spend time fundraising, but I can spend the rest of my time growing the business. Totally valid argument. You might also be thinking, well, if I only ask for $200,000, they're more likely to give me that money and then I can wind up going to other investors and raising those other kinds of small amounts. Again, also a valid argument. Of course, the problem with that $200,000 um, ask is that you're going to be spending a lot of time fundraising and maybe not working on the business as much. But, you know, from the entrepreneur's perspective, I got it. But that's not really relevant when you're dealing with venture capitalists. You've got to have a number that matches what they're willing to give or they're willing to invest, not necessarily what you think is best. Okay. And then you also have to look at diversification. This one can be kind of tricky, right? Because some venture capital groups might take those 10 firms and they want them in all different industries so that, you know, if one sector goes down, don't worry, you know, the other nine sectors might not be hurt as badly, right? On the other hand, some venture capital groups specialize in one. So they'll do like just tech, all 10 tech, all 10 with just biopharma. And there's different advantages and disadvantages to that, right? So again, if you go, if you hit the shotgun approach where 10 different firms and 10 different industries, you know, the chances of at least something hitting seem to increase, right? And so if one sector of the economy goes down, you know, hopefully the rest of it doesn't go down too. Okay, I got it. The bad side is you've got to have a pretty large team to actually be able to evaluate 10 different firms and 10 different industries. Whereas if you take the anti-diversification strategy where you, you just focus on biotech or just pharma or, what, or biopharma, whatever, then what you wind up having is super specialization and very, very deep knowledge in one particular field. And so you'll know that field really well and you're going to have maybe a higher chance of picking the right firms within that field. Plus, you're going to have a smaller team because everyone's kind of on the same page, right? Everyone brings similar things to the table. Okay, that's a good thing too. No. Again, that's something you need to know as an entrepreneur. You need to make sure that you get the right VC for you. And, and part of that is, of course, making sure that you match whatever their diversification or anti-diversification strategy might be. Okay. Then we've got to look at the qualitative factors. Are you even in the right industry? for this particular VC, right? You know, I remember uh, one of the incubators where I worked, uh, they brought in somebody who uh, was from a venture capital firm that invested actually in Hulu. And people say, hey, I've got this thing, you know, I want to pitch my idea to you. And, you know, they're pitching, like, agriculture and trucking and all that stuff. And the guy, and the guy was really gracious. He's like, look, that might be a great idea, but, you know, I do tech stuff. I'm not qualified to com uh, comment on that. Okay? So, there you go. Also, geography. Are you in the right geographical region for that venture capital group? Now, some venture capital groups may invest across the globe, and some may only invest in a certain region. Are you located in the appropriate region? Right? Also, what is your geographical strategy? Are you a firm that's just going to stay in Silicon Valley, or are you a firm that has aspirations to penetrate every market across the world? Right? So that has to match. You know, if you find a great venture capitalist in Scotland and you want to stay in Silicon Valley, it might work out, but chances are that firm that's only focusing on the Scot, you know, Scotland and those areas 
probably won't invest in you if that's their main focus. Okay? Unless you think you're going to penetrate the Scottish market one day. Um, so you need to make sure there's a match there. And then again, the stage. Remember, we've talked about this before. Some venture capital groups specialize in seed, startup, growth, maturity, right? And those have different levels of risk factors, different levels of expertise. So if you're in the um, startup phase, you probably don't want to go to a, C, a venture capital group that specializes in seed companies. Okay? You want to go to one that's in the startup. Okay? So do some screening on your own first because you don't want to waste your time with the pitches and everything else um, on, you know, if you don't even have a chance to begin with. And of course, this also goes into the sales selection process that we talked about previously. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. In the next video, we're going to refresh a little bit about how venture capitalists find their deals. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Hit that subscribe button and definitely comment down below. And my question for you, my YouTube community, is you know, what do you think if you were an investor? What do you think you would prioritize? Would you prioritize the quantitative factors or the qualitative factors? And if so, which one would you choose? I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.